A lot of people online have a rise and a fall. They blow up exponentially and then kind of taper off. For example, a couple of years ago, if you look back at the Minecraft scene, they were basically up there with like Tom Hanks and Ryan Gosling. They were enormous. And now they still have an enormous following, but nowhere near as much. And in the streaming world, you have people that basically blew up in like a year. And to this day, they're still very, very popular. Like for example, White Eye Show Speed and Black Jinxie. But there's a streamer that has recently blown up overnight. And this is like, bro, this is unprecedented. This is someone that has not uploaded onto YouTube for like, I, I think like a year or two years. And when they did a return stream, they basically got the best part of 200 thousand views that is up there with like drake playing fortnite so this story revolves around the vtuber selen tatsuki now again i, I do want to say i probably i'm going to butcher a lot of these names apologies for that now i've known about vtubers for a while but i had no idea how deep the rabbit hole went vtubers are basically people that instead of showing their face they'll have like a character on screen this could be something that's it's usually anime but it could be something uh drawn something furry basically they're not showing their face they usually have some kind of character emoting and talking i actually remember years ago there was a vtuber of a guy that was like i think a doge or something and that guy was blowing up this is going back like four or five years i totally forget the guy's name and then his streaming rig actually broke and he face revealed in front of hundreds of thousands of people i'm sure that is always a constant anxiety for vtubers but again the scene is enormous so selen like a lot of vtubers had multiple characters and one of these characters was called doki bird and apparently after some poor management borderline abuse she was fired by her management company keep in mind a lot of these vtubers it does basically run like a factory like usually they're attached to huge monolithic companies that are usually very out of touch surprisingly not nintendo but then in december of 2023 she was hospitalized apparently trying to take her own life now this was for a multitude of reasons one of the ones i could find was apparently a music video was put out that cost fifteen thousand dollars and then it was just removed the first day it came out now one of the reasons why doki bird blew up is because she took to twitter to talk about her situation i will not be silenced anymore on december I was hospitalized for an attempt that was caused by a built up of bullying from within and being in a toxic and poor environment from numerous months that led up to my breaking point. I requested to leave first, but on more neutral terms on the 26th of January. Now that tweet, despite having no screenshots, no real proof, just more of a statement, it blew up. It got around 150,000 likes. But she's basically saying that she's broken away from her company. They were very negligent towards her, basically abusive. And she's going to return to streaming, but as a solo content creator. Now, you're probably wondering, who is this big, bad company that took advantage of Doki Bird so much? Was it Machinima coming back from the dead? Well, apparently they're called Niji Sanji. Now, I'm taking a look at them right now, and they are a virtual YouTuber agency owned by a company called Any Color. Now, if you look at any of the screenshots, you can just see like the roster of VTubers that they have. Jesus Christ. Now, Doki is not the first person to talk about this. Apparently, a lot of insiders at Niji Sanji have talked about their experiences being very, very bad with the company. Now, back onto that song I talked about earlier, which cost around $15,000. That was Selen, or, you know, Doki Bird, as everyone knows her at the minute. And she released a cover of a song by Lily Pichu, who's, again, another very popular VTuber. Now, you could argue that Lily Pichu isn't a VTuber herself, but I counter that because uh, she streamed one shot like 10 days ago, and she had like a drawn character that emoted. So that's it. That For me personally, that is the checklist if you're a VTuber. Now, Niji Sanji basically said that Doki Bird was wasn't paying artists for commissions. Despite them saying that, artists have came out and said, yes, we were paid for commissions, so they're obviously lying. But this is actually because they were trying to get their invoices paid by Niji Sanji. And they were fighting that company so long to be paid that Doki Bird basically stepped up herself and paid these artists out of her own pocket. And then apparently when they let Doki Bird go, they didn't even tell her that she was fired. Like she basically had to find out herself. Apparently as well, looking into it, the only reason and she actually learned about why she was fired is because they posted it on Twitter. Imagine being let go from a company and the only way you found out is because they put it on Twitter. You weren't told yourself. Now that's a brief synopsis to what happened. I do want to dig a little bit deeper. The problem is that means explaining VTuber law. And if you're confused already, it's only going to get worse. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering like three out of five words I'm saying right now. I gotta be honest, I've been looking into this VTuber law and it's like trying to explain the Metal Gear Solid law to like some when you just met on Fall Guys. So Selen Tatsuki that I mentioned earlier, one of her characters is Doki Bird. She's a Canadian Hong Kong VTuber. And she was affiliated with Niji Sanji's EN's second generation group known as Obsidia. A again, the lore goes deep. Like I...
Dude, I thought Petscop lore was bad, but trying to like understand VTuber stuff, it's so bad. <laughs> Doki Bird is the current character, the one that's juicing, but that was basically an alt account that she had. This is the tweet that they put out, by the way, letting her know that she's been terminated. We hereby announce that we have made the difficult decision to terminate our contract with the Niji Sanji EN Liva Selen Tatsuki, effective immediately due to repeated breaches of contract and misleading statements on social platforms. Now, obviously, no one likes Twitter, but the only good addition they have there is the community notes, and they did not disappoint, instantly roasting this monolithic corporation by basically saying, no, she did have the rights to use the music. It's totally fine. And then this company, Niji Sanji, that terminated Doki Bird, as soon as they did that, do you think they maybe took a break? Maybe they, you know, one of their biggest creators just got fired and she found out on Twitter. It might be a little bit, you know, the waters might not be great. Let's stay away from the internet for a few days. Nope, because straight after they started chilling a new merch drop. And this led on to a knock-on effect where other companies didn't want to associate with Niji Sanji, like for example, Height, which is basically, it's a PC company where you can buy pre-built PCs. And by the way, I do want to recommend if you ever want to get your own PC, buying a pre-built, it is incredibly expensive. It probably is a waste of money, but I do recommend that you buy a pre-built PC because last time I, I built a PC on this stream a couple years ago, that is the first and last time I'm ever doing that. I came on here with the with the, the, the foresight that I am a fucking moron. I am a moron, I'm admitting this. Pyro, you forgot the Sorkon. I forgot the what? Coward. Sorkon D's nuts. Okay, funny buddy, funny. Mods, one month ban. Now, after this call out post, Doki Bird blew up. Like, I'm talking astronomical numbers. Like, it basically, the entire internet collectively banded together just to shit on Niji Sanji. Because in the first day alone of her call out, if you look at Social Blade, she got 200,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel. When before that, she was averaging like 150 subs a day. She got 420 subs on one of the days. <laughs> funny, funny drugs number. Keep in mind, 250,000 subscribers and still going. <laughs> so guys, we did it. We reached a quarter of a million subscribers. 250,000 subscribers and still growing. The fact that we've reached this number in such a short amount of time is just phenomenal. I'm, I'm just amazed. Thank you all so much for supporting this channel and helping it grow. I, I love you guys. You guys are just awesome. <laughs> 250,000 in a single day and you haven't uploaded in two years? What? And then to make her grand return to VTubing, she live streamed on YouTube. Now she set this thing at like a 30 hour wait. And I remember at some points it was like 20 hours before the live stream even started. And there was already like 10,000 people waiting in that chat. And this same stream got over a million views in just under a day. So th this... Again, I had no idea the VTuber scene was so huge, man. God damn. Now, I've gone through this stream, which I do want to say is probably the first and last VTuber stream I will unironically watch in my entire life. But there are some things to note. Like, for example, she talks about how bad her schedule was. She'd basically wake up at 7 o'clock in the evening, which is probably what most of you do, and then would play video games until 11 in the morning. Believe me, I've been there. It sucks. All right. You guys want to know my schedule before then? This was my schedule before then. I wake up at 7 p.m. <laughs> I wake up at 7 p.m. I <laughs> I eat di I eat lunch. <laughs> I eat lunch. I play video games. It's 4 a.m. I eat dinner. <laughs> and then I play until I'm so fucking tired that I pass out. That that was the most healthiest schedule I had for almost a month straight. Wasn't that? <laughs> oh. And so what I saw, I saw, I was like, oh my God. Now to don't make it depressing, <laughs> Doki. Don't take it. <laughs> don't make it depressing, Doki. Please, they want to watch anime girls <laughs> to escape from reality. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need to. I need to get back into the groove of things, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. 
And then she goes ahead and talks about how, you know, she's actually getting her life in order now because she doesn't have this huge monolithic company, you know, pulling all the strings behind her. And, you know, she's getting therapy, looking at improving herself and actually has some goals. You know what's funny? I actually just came back from therapy. And yeah, I have weekly therapy now because, you know, that the, that definitely sounded so healthy, right? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I do have a, I have a purpose now. I do. I'm not playing video games until like 11 in the morning <laughs> anymore. I actually have stuff I want to do again. I actually have goals. I actually have things I want to do. Things I I want to play. Things I want to plan and on top of that as well doki bird now has a manager apparently he's a pro apex player in the x set team and he's called sovereign she also talks about on stream as well how the manager reassured her that nothing's going to come out of her own pocket they'll get her sponsors and stuff like that i have never heard of the x set team in my life but one thing is for sure they have picked up doki at the right time they are going to make a lot of money doki even talked about at one point how like she basically had over like two hundred thousand dollars that she was just n never paid for like, like like zero profit my mom scolded me about this because she looked at my financials and i made zero profit last year <laughs> She also goes on about like some anecdotal stories here. I think at one point she says how she was playing single player games and because she was just that dedicated to streaming that she struggled to play games single player. So she would almost use her friends to reenact Twitch chat. I, I would drag my friends in, a, in like a Discord call and I'd be like, watch me play. And then we listen to me comment. <laughs> All right, you're gonna pretend to be my chat and I'm gonna be commentating while I play this game. <laughs> Now, towards the end of the stream, she does talk about the situation in depth. I'll, I'll just let this play out because I, I think it's very important. But this is the... I only talk about this once. So, as y'all know, when the announcement dropped, I was just as surprised as all of you. I only found out because a friend messaged me and I didn't even know what was in it. And I read it for, for the first time when it went public. When I saw no, that I tri did try to leave neutral. Yes, I knew. It would be very bad for everyone involved if it went to the last possible route. And, um, and I tried. I really did try to try and make it neutral. And I did get a lawyer because my emergency contact and I couldn't really handle it anymore, uh, especially when I was still recovering. And I was lucky that I had a statement made in advance, uh, which my lawyer helped edit in case this did happen, so I could respond instantly. The statement that was posted was written so I'd be safe and I can move forward and restart my life while being stuck in limbo forever. And I know there's a lot of people that wish for me to clarify or explain more, but I honestly can't and I'm sorry. And these are the things that I can say though. I was in the hospital for an attempt and I provided medical documents of everything that happened to prove it as well as the therapy sessions afterwards and doctor evaluation. Everyone knew I was in the hospital and the reason behind it a few days before I was discharged. And I was not referencing something that happened once that pushed me to it, but it was a buildup that stemmed for multiple months that led to my breaking point. I would never make this claim without proof or confirmation and only did so that my lawyer looked through the proof and believed and agreed it was happening in the multiple months from what I showed. I honestly wish I could have met you all one last time. And I cried when I found that I couldn't. And I hope I can still meet you on the future, even if I'll be a little different. 
my final note on all of this is let's not harass or bully anybody. I already know how that felt. I want us to be adults and not make it high school. And I want to move on, focus on us, succeed and be better. And the Lunar New Year is coming and it's two new beginnings. And it's time to leave the past behind us and make new memories. And that's pretty much the whole situation with Doki. Like, I wanted to talk about this and look into it because I've seen her, like, all over my Twitter. And, like, sometimes I'll get recommended tweets from, like, you know, spheres and, and clicks of people that I don't interact with, you know, on the For You page. But I could not escape seeing her tweets anywhere. So I wanted to look into it more and just kind of see the situation. But I'm happy that she's escaped that dog shit company and is now, you know, fulfilling her own goals. She, she's doing her own things. I really do wish her the best. And that stream is one way to do it because I went through the stream and every single second there was a donation popping up so she's easily made well over three hundred thousand dollars off that stream alone and that is a very good start probably not as much money as she's lost from ninjutsu but it's a start